This is Code.org. I'm currently working on their CS Discovery course. I'm on Unit 3. Let's see what we're doing. Ooh, we have code. I, I just have to always hit run. I want to see what it does. Oh, salt. I think we saw a salt shaker later on. Are we going to get a pepper in them? Nope. All right. Salt it is. All right. So let's see what we have here. Mouse did move. We can also use a boolean. Don't let that freak you out. That means the less than greater than equal sign. It technically means true false in code. All right. We can also use boolean expressions to check whether or not the mouse has moved. The mouse did move block will return false if the mouse is still. That would make sense, right? So if we say mouse did move, and if it's like, no, mouse didn't move, it tells the computer false, I didn't move. Uh, that's the mouse talking. <laughs> Um, if the mouse is still, but true if the mouse has been moving. So that would also make sense. True, I'm the mouse, I moved. Okay? So do this. Right now, this program just displays a salt shaker sprite. You'll need to use mouse did move so that you can shake the salt by moving the mouse back and forth. Ooh, salt shaking. Add a conditional that checks if mouse did move. Okay? If the conditional is true, rotate the salt sprite randomly to the left and right. So first we need to add a conditional that checks if mouse did move. Conditional, that just means an if statement, right? Don't let that freak you out because the if statement checks a condition. So we're going to go over to control here. I'm going to pull this up a bit and drop in my if. Check if mouse did move. I'm going to drop it here. So what am I doing? Add a conditional that checks if mouse did move. So. I'm going to go over to world, I think. Mouse did move is here. And put that in there. So what this is, again, this mouse did move, it's technically a code function. We'll get into that later. But it's something that checks. The computer says, hey, mouse, did you move? And if this says, if I'm moving the mouse on the game screen, it would say true. And so if mouse did move, okay, well, it checked and that is true. It will run the code inside our conditional, inside our if statement. If it is false, it would drop below and run code underneath it, or run an else statement if there is one. Rotate the salt shaker randomly to the left or right. Oh, I know how to do that. We're going to go over to variables. We want to do equals, okay? And then we're going to rotate it to the right or left, but we can use a plus statement to, for that. Now let's double check on our grids. Our grids are grid. If I go back and forth, okay? Notice X is really what's changing because X is zero way over here on the left. And as I go way over here, it's going to be near 400. So X is what we're going to want to mess with there. We're also going to want to use a random number because we want to randomly move it to the left or right. So X for left and right. Let's go over here to sprites. Sprite X. Drop that in there. And then sprite X again because we're changing the sprites property. I don't have a sprite named Sprite, I have a sprite named Salt. So I got to change this to Salt, because we want to change the Salt property, or the salt x, salt x variable, I guess. Random. Right and left. We've done this previously. Wait, did we want to rotate it? Ooh. Ooh. Not X. I'm lying to you. We want to change the Salt rotation property. Boop. And rotation. That's better. Now let's, I'm going to shrink this down for a bit. Oops. Salt and salt. And then we're going to change the rotation. Um, is rotation out of 360? I think so. Okay, so this might be wild, but thankfully with code, we can kind of test things out and change our mind. I'm going to do negative 50 to 50 because that will make it rotate left or right, I believe. Who knows, though? I could be wrong, but it should, right? Because they're out of 360 circle. Meh, it makes six sense to me. Add a conditional, check, mouse did move, check. If the conditional is true, it will drop down in here, rotate this all randomly left to right. Okay, let's go ahead and test. What? Oh, oh no, I have to hit run. Ah, ah, notice it's rotating. If the conditional is true, rotate the salt randomly. So if we think that's a bit too wild, of course, we can change this up some. We can also lower the refresh rate. 
Oh, it's really going that way a lot. Let's see if it, we can get it the other way. Oh, yeah. See, because it is random, so you don't really know. What's this say? Challenge. Can you keep track of how many times the mouse did move? Ooh, we could do this like they did in the last one. Shakes the salt. And then rotate it right side up after a hundred shakes. Ooh. So, after a hundred shakes. Huh. Can we keep track of it? All right, I have a plan. I love the challenges. We are definitely doing it. So what do I have to... I'm going to get rid of our comment. We don't need it anymore. Comments are for programmers, but we don't need that. That was a good hint. All right, control. I'm going to add another if, okay? And I need a new variable. So let's actually add that. I should have done that first. Variable. And if you're not sure about this, you could look at the last one that hopefully you did. I'm going to name the variable count. And I'm going to set it equal to zero at first. Okay. So what am I doing here? Challenge, keep track of how many times the mouse did move. All right. So that means only if the mouse did move, right? Only if this is true, I'm going to take my count. Boop, and I'm going to say count. Count is going to equal, well, whatever count was last time plus one okay and then i'm gonna get rid of that actually count equals count plus one now in this if statement i want to check if count equals a hundred and remember you don't want to set equals uh you don't want to set it to just one equal sign because that creates a new variable that assigns it a new value if i write count equals and not two equals just one a hundred that then means, well, now count equals 100. This means, hey, does count equal 100? And honestly, in code, just in case there was an error, I might even use uh, if count is greater than or equal to. But we are going to be uh, follow their exact instructions. If count equals a 100. Oh, wait, should it stay right side up? Okay, so then rotate it right side up after 100 shakes, but it doesn't have to stay there. So if I did if counts greater than or equal to 100, every time after 100, it's just going to be right side up. All right, so they just said rotate it. So we'll rotate it, but we'll let you keep shaking it, I guess. Variable, I'm going to do sprite, rotation. Drop that in there. We're going to change it to salt again. Salt dot rotation set equal. Um, let's see. Does it give us some clues about this? It does. Let's see here. Let's just say at the top. The rotation usually likes... If I, the default rotation is zero, which is positive x. All right. Let's try zero then maybe and see what this does. Um... Okay, let me just make sure. Can you keep track of how many times the mouse did move, shakes the salt, and then rotate it right side up? Let's see uh, what we have here. Move, move, move. Oop, and it went right side up once we hit 100. But now it's letting us move uh, again. So I think that met the challenge. Add an addition that checks mouse did move. If the condition is true, rotate the salt. Yep makes the salt and then can you change keep track of how many times the mouse did move shakes the salt then rotate it right side up at 100. we did that we could even have it print on the screen somewhere if we wanted just like they did in the last lesson uh the amount of times they shaked but this is the code that worked for me with the challenge complete Awesome. And that actually does it for Lesson 13. I love how tough this is going, and I'm excited to create our own game. So I'm going on to Lesson 14.